In this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare for a Tableau interview. So before we begin, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I release new videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and let's get into it. All right, so I've just jotted down some points here. It's mostly going to be a talking video, but I'll get through them relatively quickly. And these are the things I kind of think about. Now, I've interviewed people for Tableau jobs and analytics and all that kind of stuff. I've also applied for like Tableau jobs and all that kind of stuff. And it's really good to kind of understand both sides of how the interview process actually works. It's not a kind of black and white, hi, I'm this, my requirements meet the job description, then I should get the job right. It's not how it works, right? So there's, it's kind of an art form. There's a lot more to it um, in terms of just how to apply for jobs and how to get jobs in general. But this is going to be kind of more targeted to Tableau. So step number one, learn Tableau. So don't, don't apply for a really high-end Tableau job if you have no Tableau experience or very little, right? So understand what you're actually applying for. So if you're applying for something where it's like we need to do some visualizations, you don't have to do the Tableau backend or anything like that, Tableau server, then yeah, you should be pretty good intermediate to expert in Tableau desktop. You don't need to know Python in Tableau, nothing that advanced, I would say in most cases, but you should be able to get a data set and start visualizing something because they might ask you to do that inside as well. Oh, and that's another one. Um, uh, so test um, in the interview. So I'll explain how you go about doing that. Um, it's not actually what you think. So uh, make sure you actually know the software. Make sure you know what it does. And if they say something that you don't know, well, just say you don't know. Okay, which kind of brings us to the next question. Um, sometimes you, well, most times you're going to interview with someone who already knows Tableau most of the time because they need to know technically if you can do the job. So if you start pretending and bull right your way through, they'll know. Okay, I've had people who apply for a job and they go, oh, yeah, I would use this technique and that. And I'm like, what the hell are they talking about, right? If you don't know, you don't know, right? So it's, and really what we're trying to test, what we're trying to understand is where are you at in terms of your development? Because for me, what I'm looking for when I'm hiring someone is I'm not hiring someone who knows everything in Tableau or anything, everything in every software because that person doesn't exist. No one knows everything. What we're trying to understand is can we teach this person? Can we mold them? Can we, are, will they listen to us or do they think they know everything? Okay, so by pretending you know everything, you're, you're doing a disservice to yourself and you're not giving them an opportunity to say, well, we'll happily train you in that, right? So the thing I always say with people is that like I can train you in any software, you'll eventually get it. I can train you how to use computers. I can train you how to do all that kind of stuff. I can't train you not to be a douchebag. Or I can't train you not to be a liar or to be a faker. I can't train you that. So be genuine, okay? Um, number three is have a portfolio. I very rarely see people do this, okay? It's one thing to say what you can do. It's another thing to show what you can do. And the second, the latter is so much more important. So... What I did once for a job <clears throat> was they said, you know, this is what we want. This is the Tableau. Uh, this is kind of the analytics we want to be able to see. So what I did was I went through some of my old files of things that I had built or things that I had designed. And I even designed brand new ones just for the interview. So I went to Tableau Public. Um, I went to the Interworks website. You can go Makeover Monday, Iron Viz, get some ideas and just build something interesting. It doesn't have to be job related, just something interesting, right? Do printouts on paper. You know, don't give them a USB or something because it means you can't discuss it during the meeting. So if you have printouts, you're like, oh, I built this and I took this data and I did that. And that's really cool because you're just like, wow, man, this person can actually do this stuff. That's fantastic. And they'll test you like, how did you build this part? So don't just download something and copy and say it's yours, you know, make sure you actually build it. So that's a really good tip because you can actually send that ahead of time. So even before the interview process starts, for example, typically what happens is there's an application process, they review, you go for an interview, but that's kind of like 10 steps into the interview process this is what most people don't know. The inter You don't have to wait for the interview process to get the engagement. You can actually start by just calling them up directly like look for the person's name on the, the actual um, job description. What you usually see for a lot of companies, they'll just have contact this HR person with this phone number. That's the interview. 
that's the the first phone call is the first interview. That's the first stage. If you impress them there, you're pretty much a shoe in for the rest of the stuff. It's very hard to go from nothing into an interview with people you never met before. You don't know any details to really win them over, right? Because this is like a dance. This is like, you know, high school formal, high school social, where, you know, you're the guy and there's like 10 girls there and you have to kind of go in. But if you don't know them, it makes it a bit harder, right? So make sure you have stuff ready. Okay, number four is kind of just a tip. Have a copy of your resume, please. Because a lot of the times, um, you know, you send different copies of resumes and they'll question you on something and you're like, oh, I don't remember. You end up looking like an idiot. So always have a copy of your resume whenever you go to interviews and bring, oh, bring a pen and paper, please. I love it when someone is taking notes as I'm interviewing them because we're telling them about our business. It's like, oh, you know, our company does this and one of the things we struggle with is we can't do this. And when they're like, oh, cool, that's interesting. Whatever. And they're, because it means they're serious. Someone who's just kind of like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm like, get out of my office, you know? So bring a pen and paper and take notes of really important stuff because when, let's say you do get the job, on day one, you need to know what you're going to be doing, right? All right, these next three, oh my God. I can't believe people don't do this. It's ridiculous, right? So if you're going to an interview um, and there's 20 candidates, right? You're not trying to get the interview. You're trying to beat them. Oh, well, sorry. You're not trying to get the job directly. You're trying to beat the other 19. So you need to go, well, what are the other 19 not doing? So think of yourself as an athlete, like a runner or a bodybuilder or a basketball player. If you want to beat the rest of the people competing, you need to do what they're not willing to do, right? You need to get in there. So things that I do is number one, study the company, know a bit of the history, and you can Google that in 10, 20 minutes, understand kind of how the company was built, how how long they've been around, um, the kind of uh, areas that they work in, the, the sectors, and they'll be very impressed when you do, because when they start saying, oh, you know, um, our company was built in this is like, oh, yeah, I read about that. It's from this guy, and he came like this. And they're like, oh, this person is actually interested. They're serious about this, right? Which kind of leads to this next one, which is like, after you've studied the company, study what you're actually going to be working on. It's so infuriating when I there's a job description. And it's like, we need someone who knows about uh, aged care, let's say. We need someone who knows about aged care sector. Right. So then if someone comes in, they go, I don't know anything about aged care. It's like, well, do you know what the project is? Not really. It's like, get out. You know, we need you to know what you're doing so that we can actually discuss it in the meeting. So study what you're actually going to be doing. You can get that from the job description. You can get it from calling the contact. If you don't have that, just call anyone at the company and go, can you direct me to HR? Right. There's actually a really good book that actually told me a lot of this stuff. I'm going to have to find it one day. Um, but you can do all that. Just take the steps that everyone else is not willing to do. Um, and the and the last one is one probably gets missed. If you can, you can't always figure out who's going to be interviewing you. Like their exact names, first name, last name. And if they say it over the phone, say, how do you spell that? And the reason is you want to be going on. This is going to sound funny. You want to go on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, right? Google, right? Figure out who this person is. So I went to very extreme, not extreme lengths. I didn't stalk anyone. But like, um, so I would go, all right, what does it say on their Google? What do they post on Facebook? Which, which universities did they go to? What softwares do they know? What are their skill sets? Are they married? Do they have kids? Do they travel? Are they outdoorsy? Are they indoors? Anything you can find out about the person interviewing you is valuable information because what you're trying, what interviewers are also trying to gauge is, do you have the skills and do we like you? And do we like you sometimes actually more important because you can have, I've interviewed someone who had way more skill than the job required. Like, freakishly overqualified amazing talent but we hated hated their guts because they were just kind of like very douchebaggy you know so you need to build that rapport and the only way to do that is to connect with someone and you need to connect on something common even if it's not completely true you know like necessarily so if so, like i know how to ride a bike 
but I've interviewed with someone who's like a legit cyclist. So I'll be like, oh, you know, like Tour de France was just on and man, it was so cool and this and that. And they're like, yeah, 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 this and that. I've had ones where like I found out the guy was a bass player. So I was like, oh yeah, you know, I play a little bit of guitar. You know, I do this. And do you know about this bass player? So I would study the different bass players who this person might like because of their age, right? Go the extra step if you're really serious about getting a job. So what I found like over time is when I first started, when I was like 20, you would apply for like hundreds of jobs that nobody calls you back. When you get older and you start learning how this kind of stuff works, you understand how the interview process works, you get better at your skills. And this is a skill. Anyone can learn this communication skills. Um, you apply for less and less jobs and you spend more and more time on less and less applications. So for me, it went from like hundreds to now, like if I'm getting a new job, two or three applications that I'm super serious about. And most of the time I get it, right? Okay, number eight is have fun and breathe, okay? Sometimes people come in and they look like they're about to have a heart attack. Um, and I think sometimes it's just the pressure of an interview. And what I like to do is, you, and there's a lot of Tony Robbins stuff you can do and kind of training you're just gonna relax take a really deep breath make sure you drink a lot of water get to the interview place like half an hour ahead of time but you don't have to go in straight away 30 minutes is too eager but 30 minutes in the area because you never know what could go wrong the tram breaks down your car breaks down the train is late whatever you can't find the place so make sure you have enough time but the other reason you want to, um, to have enough time so when you get there you have time to kind of calm down take a breath relax, right, before you kind of go in. And remember, as soon as you're in the in the vicinity of the area, you're on. That means how you walk, how you talk. From me getting off the tram or the, the train or whatever, I am in performance mode. I'm smiling. I'm having a fantastic day. I'm like loving life. I'm looking like this, right? Because you don't know who's watching you. There was a story I heard of, um, a, he's now a CEO, um, and when he started in the company, he started at the very bottom. Um, and he was like, he was trying to be a mechanic, but he was like 16 years old, didn't really have much skill. So, you know, he went for the interview. He thought it went well, but as soon as he got out into the car park, his tire was flat. Right? So he repaired the tire and then he was off. So they called him up and they said, hey, listen, you know, your interview went really well, but the main reason we hired you as a mechanic is because we saw you change the tire and he was confused. And he changed the and he actually demonstrated his skill and they were watching him of like from the buildings like man this kid's actually doing this he knows his stuff right even at this age so you never know who's watching you you don't know who you're riding with it could be the person on your train is the person interviewing you you don't know so you need to be in performance mode the whole day right and be ready so that as soon as they see you, just from the look of you, they're like, man, this person seems to be having a great day. And you give that energy. And then, you know, breathe, relax, have fun. You can joke around and stuff like that, you know. Anyways, I can go on. Um, and this one is kind of like the test in the interview. So let's say they go, here's a data set. We want you to do a visualization. We're not necessarily testing whether you can do it. And this is very important. We don't need to know if you know all the techniques and all the functions in Tableau because you can easily learn that from a Google search, right? What we're trying to assess is how do you go about a problem? Do you freak out? Do you get nervous? Can you handle pressure, right? Um, can you, what, what's your process? What's your methodology? Do you just rush in and start building things without really thinking about what you're doing, right? Do you manage your stakeholders? Do you ask them questions first? So really what you're trying to demonstrate is that you have a process, that you've done this before, you know what you're doing, and that what you're building is just a prototype. It's just to get started and that you will iterate the solution if you have the opportunity. That for me is how I would approach it. I have been sent from people who've had interviews like this was the problem i was sent and sometimes it's like set up for failure because when i read the job description it's probably like for a basic analyst kind of thing but then they were testing for something very very difficult in a very in a period of time that even advanced uh users may not be able to solve which suggests to me they're not testing whether you could solve it they're testing how you go about it right so very important so don't freak out too much about this part of the interview. So there's like heaps of other um, things I could talk about. If there's topics you want me to cover, be sure to just like drop it in the comment. I mean, I love talking about this kind of like um, 
this kind of stuff. So hit me up if you want me to talk about a specific topic. Until then, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video. Be sure to subscribe because I release new videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And until then, bye.